that there's a reason why the hip hop today looks the way that it does. It's not really hip hop, it's just the rap industry, right? And why is that? All right, so in, in the presentation, I take you through these different culture streams. And that is one, we got to understand these, good, these big global events that happen along with these micro events. The big global event is going to be the British Empire. The British Empire is going to bring the Afghanistan community into the black spaces of the urban areas. All right, these are Muslims who are from India or, or Pakistan. They call themselves Muslims, Muslims, Muslimen, all right? They come in and they began to teach these black migrants who come from the South during, during the Great Migration, okay? So this is how we get to a Master Farah Muhammad. This is how we get to the Ambilaj Muhammad. We also got the West Indies coming in. So before we get to a cool DJ Hurts, all right? We got to get to these Garveyites that are coming into this space, okay? We also have independent production and black thought, right? People like Atoro Shorebird, right? The history also comes into this in those earlier time periods, all right? So when I was doing the research, one of the things it shows is so much like, why did they want to take the consciousness out of hip hop? And I came across a paper that it's amazing because I just looked it up, so it's back online, but it's been off the line for a long time now. It's called um, Islam in the Midst, Lessons of the Five Percent. And basically, after the Million Man March, after the question is, how did Minister Farrakhan get out of those black men in Washington, D.C. at the Million Man March? All right? That is what white folks wanted to know. So they had two um, conferences in, in, in anthropology, and basically what they end up saying is the consciousness is in the music. Right? right? Basically what they're saying is the consciousness is, is, is in the music. Alright? And they're concerned 